Thank you. And thanks for uh, the receptive mode. It's fascinating how fast stuff manifests, like right now. As people have been hearing for years in Asheville, where we are is we've signed a contract on a job out in San Diego, and we are moving in the near future, and something we've manifested for seconds, I'll say. And because it's a moment-to-moment -moment thing, I had this revelation yesterday about there's the being married, and getting married is one manifestation, and being married is an ongoing creation. And right now, there's this interesting lag because there's this opportunity to have this position out in California came about in August. And it's been fascinating because basically, okay, you have the job, now this credentialing stuff has to happen, you know, the medical institutional stuff. It's a national security clearance, so it's been a really interesting experience for me. But what I'm wondering about and want to understand the subtlety between figuring things out, which is from the need aspect of a desire. And maybe and, even using your human mind to do it. Yes, which is sometimes satisfying. Like I've realized recently, like being an athlete, it's fun to use your body to do something. It's also fun to use your mind. I really get the understanding of thinking is an action. It's kind of physical. But we're going to just have fun. You know the answer to this, but we're going to have fun with you anyway and with everyone else too. Mm -hmm. Is it a good idea to use your body for something before you've thought about what you're going to do? No. And is it a good idea to use your mind for something without being in the receptive mode? No. Good. So what's interesting now is this time factor is I'm wanting to be clear on recognizing when I'm receiving the inspiration as opposed to... We're helping you to find a basis for the question that you just asked, which we're going to ask you to ask again. What if the time factor... The time factor... Dun, 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 <laughs> was completely irrelevant okay and the receptive mode factor is the only thing that's relevant yes uh -huh. because in the receptive mode time stands still time expands time does whatever it needs to do to accommodate whatever needs to be done i absolutely because agree. time is perceptual mm -hmm. and receptive mode is all about being in the receptive perceptive mode isn't it Absolutely, and that's where the timing winds up perfect. There's. Um, Do you think that your inner being knows where you are in relationship to what you want? Yeah, 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 you know that. <laughs> Do you think that your inner being knows where all of the other cooperative components are in relationship? Yes. I do. Do you think that Source is in contact with more cooperative components than only you? Absolutely. Do you believe that there are other cooperative components who are finding themselves in the receptive mode. Yes. Do you think then that Source has already lined up all the receptive modes that are necessary for the inspiration that they need to do in order to rendezvous with you at the perfect time? Yes. And do you need to know what all of those are? Nope. Or is that something in the same way that you delegate so many tasks to other people mm -hmm. who are well suited to do those tasks? Don't you think that that would be a good task to delegate to the universe who is perfect at that? I think that'd be a good idea. <laughs> And so, therefore, do you accept that everything is already lined up and that time is irrelevant because it's all lined up and that your singular work is to get into the receptive mode in whatever way you can? And like our friend before you, you might have to stay off that subject to do it. I get that, and we're allowing little pieces to come in and then we don't think about it a whole lot we kind of live our lives yes. laugh a lot yes you know come here hang yes. with friends yes and there's a magical way of things evolving and so there are times where we are lined up happy you know tapped in tuned in turn on and then contrast happens and this is the other piece of this so i understand being in the receiving mode and because it feels satisfying and clear and easy and straightforward and easy it's like the, the actions are easy the ideas are easy because it's flowing and then there's sometimes where figuring out feels like a little bit of relief that's one aspect of this and the other is understanding the universe has our back when we get through some contrast like last weekend we had this experience where 
we had intended to go to one place and our GPS took us a really long, long way and the restaurant we went to didn't have space for us, where we usually go to, and then we had this, but the timing, the universe arranges wonderful timing. So what looked like a mistake was happening turned out to be the universe's brilliant way of accomplishing your rendezvous with things that were important. Absolutely. So there's a quirky thing where, why this, why now? What if it were always that way? Uh, what if every delay uh -huh. was for the same reason? Okay. Well, every contrast is good too. Well, the delay felt like contrast to you while you were being delayed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, had that. Like, in other words, do you realize that you just received the analogy to give to us that was the answer to your own question? <laughs> Happens a lot. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're in this receptive mode. Yeah. So we interrupted you with this fabulous insight, but what were you wanting to say? It's um, the managing that fine tuning distinction between. So contrast occurs. It's desirable, it's lovely, and more and more I can really appreciate this. Like even the, the comical thing, I used to use humidity as an excuse to want to move from North Carolina, now I get it. But I recognize that I really got, oh wait a second, every time I have it, there's also some reasons of humidity I can you know, appreciate the value it has, but the times I don't like it, you know, it just adds to my vortex of a pleasant day. And I can appreciate contrast. But sometimes we have contrast, and it's in the moment, the red hot minute, and the day is going, the momentum's going, the boulder's going down the hill, and there's sometimes relief in trying to think differently. And there's a subtle distinction, I think, also between when we do a focus wheel to improve a vibration on a subject, if I'm in a receiving mode, it's inspired and the thoughts are received. When I'm in the middle of the day, I think any of us are physical beings, and we're bumping into resistance, Thinking sometimes does give us some relief, but how do we get to the... Well, what you're really asking for is, what is the distinction? When should I make the effort? When resistance is present, when should I make the effort to bring myself back into alignment? And when should I just ride the boulder down the hill and take the consequences of whatever's in motion? Mm -hmm. And we say it's all about the momentum factor and where you are within it. Sometimes, the contrast is light enough or slight enough that you can divert your attention from it. Or it might be a little more concentrated, heavier contrast, but still light enough that you can do a focus wheel and bring yourself back into alignment about it. And sometimes it's contrast that came in response to a belief that you've been holding for a long time. So it pushes a big button in you. And it's not likely that you're going to be able to do anything about it right here, right now. So what we're saying to you is, if you try to do something about those larger contrasts that have deeper roots within you right here, right now, it is almost every time just going to exacerbate it. It's just going to make it worse. So you gave us the key word when you say, sometimes I find relief. Well, if you find relief easily, mm -hmm. then know that you are on the right path. But if you're struggling for the relief, then just let it go. The subject. If relief comes easily, and it should, if you're anywhere in the vicinity, relief will come easily to you. And if it doesn't come easily, then just say, this is a bigger thing for me and I'm not going to solve it right now, this red hot minute and trying to do it right now is hitting it too head on. I'm not making it better, I'm making it worse. Too far away from that vibration. And you know what we mean by that. You can feel when you're struggling and trying. Esther has become such an appreciator of focus wheels. Mm -hmm. But there are times that she can feel that it's just not working and she just smacks her book closed <laughs> and sets it on the table and says, later gator. She can feel she's getting nowhere with this mm -hmm. effort, you see. So a real quick example to massage this into place a little more. So like two days ago, I got a call. Like, so I'm with patients, I get a call. And for some reason I answer the phone. I never answer the phone one of the patients, but oh, I was inspired to answer. There answer. you go. There you go. Um, I was in the receiving mode. mode. Right. And then- Which this, is the reason that the call came yeah. then. And my inner being gave me this experience of clarification because it came to me and I was harried and frustrated because I had to get this documentation. Because you felt like done. time shortages. Yes. And I was a little bit freaked out. But later, driving up here to Asheville, I realized, or driving home, I think, I realized, oh, wait a second, so that contrast was, 
I feel harried and rushed. I don't have to feel that way. And also tapped into something about authority and, and, and deservingness. And I said, you know what? That was, in a sense, my inner being was pulling me through some contrast and some clarity I wanted. Well, it was a deeper issue, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. It was a deeper hot button. It was something that you didn't expect to run across. It was something that was never resolved within you. Was something that you've just been navigating around but now you've made a decision that makes it feel like you can't navigate around that so for just a brief moment you felt trapped in this yeah and frustrated had, and then push had to push through it the momentum was had its way with me so to speak and then what well then did you find relief yeah well i got it done and later i realized hmm, i took care of it i couldn't get a hold of these people that should have taken care of it i took care of it and at all time it worked out perfectly because I had a lecture to give. That's why I was pressed on time. So I was leaving to go to a lecture and this is at the end of the day and California is a different time zone. But sometime later after that, when it, the experience came back to me and I realized, okay, oh, this is just a contrast thing that I was being drawn through because of the tasks that needed to be happened. But that's what there's, there's rich layers that the universe puts together for me to So there's something from. that we're hearing from you that you haven't quite said yet, that we want to ask you if this is what you're reaching for. So as you're moving through the contrast, it feels like something that you had to push through. Mm -hmm. So the question that we want to ask you is, are you still accepting that the contrast served you? Yeah, I, I, I'm, yeah, 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 yeah. So if you begin with the premise mm -hmm. every time that the contrast is serving you, then do you think it's possible that rather than pushing through, you could just enjoy yourself through it? <laughs> because you've already started with the premise that you know that it's a value. Yeah. And when you get to the other end of it, you almost always see the value of then. You know, I, I know what I just got? The thing is, when we have contrast, we say, oh, I screwed up, I yeah. did something wrong. That wasn't it. I got, I, it was all right. I, even if I, this is what I'm saying. This is okay. So is it possible <laughs> that all the things that we desire to manifest and the contests we go through are all actually on our path to avoid it? Yes. I think if I screwed yes. up, I haven't screwed up because this contrast is valuable and I haven't made any mistakes because I beat myself up. It's like, oh, I should have done that right and known what that was. And I think of all my fault to justify the contrast instead of, appreciating the contrast that I beautifully appreciatingly can recognize the contrast and be in step five and not be mad at myself. Appreciate your ability to navigate with contrast because contrast is not only necessary, it's delicious in the world. When you're in the receptive mode, contrast becomes not irritating. It becomes almost thrilling. You could say joyfully challenging, joyfully challenging because you all love expansion. You love accomplishment. You love improvement. You love expansion and evolution. And so navigating in contrast is what you love most. When you play tennis, you don't look for the person that you can beat every time. Do you? <laughs> oh, you do. <laughs> But doesn't a better player help you improve your game? And doesn't contrast help you improve your game? And isn't improving your game delightful to you, this expanding being that you are? You hit right on it. You hit on the very deep, almost humanly core, been around for a long time, not just in you, but a lot of people, where you beat up on yourself as if contrast is a bad thing. And in part, we understand because we've been saying to you for years, you know what you don't want, you know what you do want, contrast, contrast, contrast. And we've been encouraging you to do what you can to soften the contrast because that was our way of explaining to you how to get into the receiving mode. But there is no contrast that will ever be greater. It's the greatest contrast that you could ever bring to yourself. Oh, let us say this in a better way. There's a much better way to say this. The singular thing that will keep you out of the receiving mode above all other things or all other things in combination together aren't as great as this one thing is you beating up on yourself because your inner being so doesn't do that. And in this context, you're going to hear this in a clear way. It isn't only that your inner being doesn't do that. It's that the momentum that your inner being has otherwise is so enormous. The love and appreciation that your inner being has is a huge, huge, huge momentum. And when you get crossways of that huge momentum, even a little crossways of that huge momentum, it's a big speed bump. And it'll shake up the contents of your bus.